so I tried to fit the motor to the frame, but the motor is pretty heavy and it's difficult to maneuver and find a good location for it. So I just decided to model the motor in Fusion 360 and 3D print a prototype. That way it will be a lot lighter, it's a lot easier to maneuver and position uh, in various places and I can try different mounts and different positions. So here is the finished uh, model. <clears throat> it's got, I, I modeled a lot of the fine features that really don't, I didn't need to, I could have just had like a more crude representation, but I figured, you know what, let me actually try to make it cool and um, go all the way. So, you know, I even modeled the screws and all the different little features and indents and things like that. So this is pretty much exactly <clears throat> a, a perfect model of Fusion, of the uh, QS motor. So, and here are the mounting points. The one thing I didn't model here is the shaft because what I'm gonna do is put a bearing in here and uh, 3D print a, a shaft separately so that way it'll actually spin in the motor. And I just think it's kind of a cool feature even though it's not very useful. Uh, but nevertheless, here it is. Um, and that humming in the back is the 3D printer printing it as we speak. It's about a day and 13 hour print. Um, takes about 800 grams of filament. So, totally worth it. So, here's the completed motor. Uh, and here's the shaft that I mentioned. So, I've got the bearing in there. And I 3D printed the shaft separately, so it spins here. But, of course, I printed this shaft as a uh, uh, constant width. But, I didn't realize it, but the actual motor has a tapered shaft. And then when you put the sprocket on there, it's, you know, it's tapered and it kind of fits right on. Um, not really sure how helpful that is, but this shaft doesn't quite fit the original sprocket, so I'll have to maybe reprint it in, in that tapered way. But, you know, it's, uh, I'm not really using it for that much anyway, so maybe I'll keep it. But here's the motor. Uh, all the features are pretty good. These screw holes, I modeled them so they actually have the threads in there. But then I ran an extra tap on there to actually make the threads work. So this is the original mount that comes with the QS138 motor. And I bored this out to, I think, 15 millimeters to fit the shaft on which I'm going to mount it on the bike. So there you go. Not the cleanest cut. I had kind of a shitty drill bit, so I'm regretting it a little bit. I should have probably... Uh, ordered a better drill bit, but it does work. It's just like a tad too big uh, Maybe I'll order a new one and redo it But for now, it's pretty good and as you can see it attaches Pretty much perfectly to the mounting points. So this 3d print was uh, pretty Successful so here's the bike in its current state um, I changed the front tire so we have a pretty nice rolling chassis. Uh, I took it out for a roll around the neighborhood. Uh, rides pretty well, the front brake works. And now I just have to mount this motor somehow, attach it. Uh, so the first place where it's gonna attach is this cross beam, like this shaft that goes through the swing arm axis. So that will pretty much attach like this, right? So I bored those out to the size of this shaft quite closely, although it could be a little bit tighter. Nevertheless, it'll attach there. And then I need to figure out first how far on this axis this motor will attach. What I did was I printed a bunch of spacers, little 3D printed spacers that will go on here. And then I can just kind of incrementally put as many spacers as I need on either side of this thing. And that's going to you know, give me a known distance from there to there. And I'll just kind of add and remove spacers until it looks, you know, pretty much how I need. All right, so here's the motor attached to the shaft. So what I found is that three spacers, and they're three millimeters each, three spacers from the left is about what I need to get the sprockets more or less aligned. So now I have to figure out where along this axis I need to 
mounts the motor. So I'm thinking maybe like this, right? But once I uh, have some weight on here with batteries and stuff, which should actually be less weight than the original motor, plus myself sitting on it, you know, it's gonna compress and it should line up. It should be like a straight line between the rear axle, the swing arm axle, and the sprocket. So with weight on the bike considered. So that means uh, it normally has to be a little bit lower. So then when the suspension compresses, it lines up. But what I wanna do is I need some way to, basically I'm gonna mount it to those points right there. I'm gonna weld it uh, to this contour. And then I'll have the mount kind of run on the bottom and also attached to, the, to this point. So I'll have, and I'm gonna use these holes here, basically uh, all but the top two. So the mount will run kind of like that. But again, I need to figure out where that is. And I also need some way to like model that contour with metal to cut it out of metal. So it, you know, fits pretty flush against those pieces. That way I can weld it together uh, without too much trouble. So what I figured is I, again, 3D printed this motor uh, spacer thing. So the idea is that I would attach this um, to this motor like that. All right, the hose lining up and then this would kick up against the portion where I'm welding it. So then obviously this is too high. So then all I have to do is just start removing material and fitting the contour until this is sitting in the right place. And then I'll have this piece as the contour, which I can use to, you know, to trace this part of the mount for the motor. And then I'll also have the distances to the screws, which will give me the right position. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so basically right now, the spot that's preventing this from going down further is just this little piece right here. So I have a Dremel, I'm just gonna grind away that piece a little bit. Just grind away a little bit over here and I'll tap some more and then see where that goes. You know, kind of a slow, tedious process, but uh, eventually what I'll end up with is this motor in the perfect position and I'll have a perfect imprint of this that I can use to cut a metal piece. So let's go for it. All right, after 10 minutes, uh, I think it's looking pretty good. So that uh, probably has to be a little lower actually, right? Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell. All right, so I made a couple more passes with the Dremel on low and uh, came at it from the other side and I actually got a pretty nice contour of this. So there's like a little bit of space there in there, but if this were a metal piece, I would have no trouble filling those gaps uh, with a weld. So for the most part, this should be really good enough to use as a cutout. And I think the motor position is good as well now. I don't know, what do you think? I'll really have to test it with a chain and then maybe some load. Uh, but for now, uh, what I'm gonna do is use this cutout and I definitely wanna use this mount point. So we'll go like this somehow to the bottom and come around like that. All right, so I'm recording this later after I had already completed the motor mount, but I just wanted to go through the process of how I got from this 3D printed part with the contour to a completed motor mount cut from eighth inch steel that fits perfectly into the frame with the motor positioned perfectly. So once I got this piece, and once I was able to determine this contour with the Dremel, what I did was just take it and trace this portion on a piece of paper, just like that. And I actually traced the entire thing, in particular, this motor register, which was the important part for scaling. So, you know, I took more care when I did it the first time, but just to illustrate, I ended up with a profile like this. So really this is the important part. And what I was able to do is to scan this 
as an image into my computer and then import it into Fusion 360. So what I ended up with was this profile in Fusion 360, and then I was able to scale it such that this motor register, because this is a known size, uh, the motor register, and I was able to scale it correctly so that I can trace over this in Fusion 360 and create a spline. And then I would have this contour perfectly determined in Fusion 360. So that allowed me to print one of these. So here, this is a printed version of this contour. It's right there. And the motor register fits perfectly like that. And then to get these aspects, including this piece here, because there's a there's a mounting point here that I needed to determine the location of. What I did was it's really I used the same procedure. So I just kind of printed this originally as just rough, a rough square piece. And then I used a pair of steel shears, like steel cutting shears to cut this roughly to the right dimensions. Then I traced it again, put it back into Fusion 360, cleaned it up so that the contours were more fluid, printed another piece and then fit that to the frame and then iteratively kept making adjustments until I ended up with something that fit pretty much perfectly how I wanted it. And it took a lot of prints, maybe like 10 to 15 iterations of printing one of these and then fitting it and then making adjustments and then printing it again and then tracing it again. It was kind of tedious, took about a week to do, but eventually, oh, and then for the top portion, because these are just the two mounting points at the bottom, there's another mounting point up here. So I just started printing pieces like this, you know, so I didn't have to print the whole thing over and over and save on filament. So then I printed this piece and again, determined the exact angle and position of that mounting point. And then finally, I ended up with the correct profile for this mount. So here the mounting points line up exactly at each location and the motor register is perfectly positioned to place the motor where I want it to be. And at that point, I was confident that the CAD model that I had was perfect for this frame. So then I just exported that Fusion 360 model as AutoCAD and then sent it out to a place to get plasma cut. And then I ended up with the steel mount. So that's pretty much it. All right, so now let's take a look at the mount itself. Originally, I was going to weld this mount here, here, and here, but I've actually decided against welding and I'm actually gonna just attach it with screws. So basically, this is the same mount as here, except here I have a, I cut a point to attach to this piece there. Um, this will attach on the back instead of just being welded at this contour. And then over here, I just welded this extra piece and that will attach on top over there. So this is basically, this goes like this, attaches just like that. And um, there's no welding needed. It basically just screws into those three points. So here, there, and up there. All right, here's another shot of the motor mount in the frame. And as you can see, it's secured at these three locations. I have it attached by this plate up here. And then down here, I've got some M8 bolts that um, where it's attached to this uh, plate that I welded to the frame. Not the prettiest weld there. <clears throat> Had some trouble with that one, just uh, getting in there at an angle, but I think it's secure. <clears throat> and then, um, and then there's this one where it's just bolted in and I got a little spacer in there just to keep it aligned. So, I mean, this motor mount is, it's quite secure. It doesn't have to bear the entire weight of the motor because the motor will also be supported by the bracket that comes with it attached to here. So this will is, this is really meant to prevent it from um, rotating around that point and also from turning. So, should be good. So let's put the motor in there now. All right, and I think that's a good place to stop. So we've got the motor in the frame. Um, I've got the chain on there. 
and the mount is secure. Next time we'll actually put in the controller. I also made a mount for the controller. We'll hook everything up and we'll get the wheel spinning. Thanks a lot for watching guys. Please like and subscribe. I'm gonna upload a couple more videos in this series until this bike is complete and running.